Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here, once again, Plan B Native Plant Nursery. Um, today I really wanted to just talk about bees. There's a lot of misconceptions out there, just about bees in general and how we should actually be helping them. And yeah, I wanted to talk about them today. And as I'm talking, I'm going to be showing you a lot of different footage of bees I've captured from the last year. I've, I've captured the footage, not the bees. I didn't catch any bees. Uh, but, because <laughs> um, I really want to emphasize the diversity of bees out there and how there's so many of them with a lot of different needs and um, we can't just care about bumblebee and honeybees as, as cool as they are. So to give us some context, there are over 4,000 distinct species of bees just in North America, but to start with let's talk about the most common ones, the ones we kind of all know. Honeybees and bumblebees are actually kind of misnomers for bees in general. Um, they both live in colonies. Bumblebees can live in colonies anywhere from 50 to 400 individuals, roughly. And honeybees can live in colonies of anywhere from 20 to 80,000 bees. Honeybees and bumblebees are also generalists, which basically just means they have a wide variety of food sources they can access and adapt to for collecting nectar and pollen. Whereas most bees are actually specialists. Specialists just means they have very specific food sources. In this case, we're talking about plants and flowers. Um, and they have to have access to these specific species in order to survive. Because so much of our insects have co-evolved with these plants over thousands of years. They have to have access to very specific ones. And in return, those plants can ensure that they get pollinated. And then if that plant declines, the pollinator will naturally decline as well and vice versa. So those two traits are pretty significant, being that they live in colonies and that they're generalists. Whereas the large majority of bees are solitary, so they live alone, and they're specialists. But it's because of these two traits that make them so adaptable, especially in urban ecosystems where we really don't or barely at all have uh, the native plants that all these specialists and other insects rely on, usually we just have a host of non-native plants that only support a select few species, and a lot of times these species are not even native, they're pests that come from other places and uh, yeah, aren't really part of our ecosystem or benefiting it. The next thing we gotta get into is honeybees because this is where a lot of misinformation comes from. Especially when it comes to the whole like save the bees thing. A lot of people go, oh okay, let me, I wanna get honeybees and raise honeybees and I get honey too, which you know, it's kind of one of the last things you wanna do if you really wanna help the bees. Because the difference between honeybees and bumblebees is a big one. Um, honeybees are actually not native to North America. If you're not in North America and you're watching this, you know, things will apply differently to you here. Honeybees may be a part of your ecosystem already, but here in North America, they're not. They're brought over in the 16th century just for the purpose of agriculture. Um, and that's their main purpose. They're actually quite detrimental to the environment in general. And the main reason for this is just the sheer amount of competition uh, they present to the native bee species around. Like I said, uh, they're generalists and they live in these huge colonies. So you can imagine how much competition that creates if you just plop that down wherever. Because those generalists, they can access a lot of different varieties of food sources. So maybe they can access the food sources those native bees can, can actually access. And they'll take up those resources as well as the other plants. Um, and then those native bees are left without any food sources and they can't actually access anything else either, so they're kind of just screwed in that way. And you know, I'm not trying to shun honeybees. Uh, honeybees are important and have their purpose too, but we just got to get away from this misconception that we should be beekeeping to help the bees because um, they're not endangered at all. In fact, uh, honeybees are bred in the billions just for their use in agriculture. But a good way to think about it is if an ecosystem is already stressed and you introduce more competition, you're just, at, you're just adding more stress to that ecosystem. Where the solution we want to have is to improve your local habitat so a multitude of species can th survive and thrive, including those honeybees, including the bumblebees, the specialists, the generalists, and you know, even more than bees. Because we're talking about bees right now, but this is wildlife in general. It's all connected. Um, another analogy you can think of that I saw online and I'm totally stealing is that beekeeping to save the bees is like keeping chickens to save birds or something. And that analogy is just because like 
you know, they're both considered domesticated animals. They're not actually helping the wild species and wildlife that are actually declining. So yeah, it's just another way to think about it. Anyways, guys, that's all I really have to say today, I think. Um, if you want to help bees and kind of the environment in general, try to improve the habitat around you. Remove invasive species, try to plant native plants, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, more videos on the way. That's all I got to say. Peace.